Hello, Common Sensors. Thank you for tuning in today. We are going to take a look at a newspaper article out of Tahlequa, Oklahoma. Now, it just talks generally about the sovereign citizen movement, but I think it highlights and it shows how the sovereign citizen movement is growing as law enforcement has to adapt to it all over the country. This article came out earlier today, like I said, in Tahlequa, Oklahoma. We're going to read about what the local police had to say about sovereign citizens, one sovereign citizen in and also what the local sheriff in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, has to say about the sovereign citizen movement. Thank you for tuning in, Common Sense Academy. If you like my content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. It's a free way to support the show and also give me incentive to make more videos, more content that you love. Also, I have an email list in the description below. Uh, sign up for my email list. Get a free PDF that I wrote with on a history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement from Joe the lawyer himself. Now, before we dig in, let's do our same time sip. I have here today my favorite poison, my favorite elixir, uh, the, the toxin of the masses, the killer of many people, the cause of diabetes, or maybe not, maybe just heart disease. Diet Pepsi. It's better when we take it together. I hope you had coffee, beer, or a beverage better than mine. Now let's dig into this article. It's from the Tahlequah Daily Press, Tahlequah, Oklahoma. The article is titled, Sovereign Citizens Not Above the Law. I'm going to put a link to it below. And it states, it starts by saying, the Federal Bureau of Investigation considers a sovereign citizen an anti-government extremist who believes they are separate from the United States despite physically residing in the country. The FBI has classified the organization as being domestic terrorism movement, where members believe they don't have to answer to government authorities such as court, taxing entities, motor vehicle departments, or law enforcement. When a person who declare, declares themselves free of laws is pulled over or detained for breaking the law, the encounter can become unpredictable. Tahlequah Police Chief Nate King said it's uncommon for his department to come across an individual who claims to be a sovereign citizen. However, every officer participates in an annual training that prepares them for an encounter. It's on our training regiment now and it's one we, we require everyone to go through, said King. In 1971, the concept of a sovereign citizen originated in the Posse Comitatus movement as a teaching of Minister William P. Gale. He identified the 14th Amendment as the act that converted sovereign citizens into federal citizens. A sovereign citizen will protest that they are a free person, are not subject to any local laws, and are free of legal constraints, including taxes or fines. Cherokee County Sheriff Jason Chenault echoed King and said the movement is something law enforcement officials don't see a law in the area. We haven't had an encounter with someone claiming to be a sovereign citizen in quite a while, said Chenault. There used to be a guy around who claimed to be part of a group and he never really gave us a lot of trouble. The sheriff said the sheriff department doesn't participate in a special training to deal with these specific members, but it is something that's discussed with deputies. There is no sovereign citizen, said Chenault. It's not reality and if you're going to be driving or living in the state of Oklahoma in the United States, States of America, you've got to abide by the laws just like everyone else does. It doesn't matter what you belong to or what you think you belong to. On April 20th, Tahlequah Police Officer, officer Matthew Fritz pulled over a driver on Bertha Parker Bypass for a seatbelt violation. Clayton Price Rowe quickly began filming Fritz and asked for his name and badge number. Fritz asked for Rowe's driver's license and proof of insurance, but Rowe continued to film the traffic stop while he read from a script of talking points on his phone. I just wish to inform you I was not engaged in transportation. I'm not commercial use of a highway. Are you aware that, have I, that I have informed you of that? Rowe asked. I was engaged in my free right of travel. The driver argued that since he wasn't arrested or detained, he didn't have to give the officer his information. However, Fritz warned Rowe many times that he could be arrested for obstruction since he refused to hand over his license and insurance while he was being detained. 
For the record, no law is valid if it requires me in any way to waive any fundamentally protected rights in order to exercise any other right or alleged privilege, and no law can convert the free exercise of any right into a crime. Roe, our sovereign citizen, said, Tulaqua Police Chief Nate King said some people have the misconception that being detained means they are handcuffed until an investigation is complete, and that is not the case. If you're stopped for running a stop sign or not wearing a belt, you are being detained. It may not be a custodial detention with handcuffs on, but you are not free to go until the officer has completed the investigation. Tulaqua Fire was called out to the incident and broke out Rowe's windows. Officers arrested him for resisting arrest and obstruction of an officer. While Rowe never called himself a sovereign citizen, he used jargon and phrases associated with the movement. King said he was impressed with how much patience and poise Officer Fritz showed during that traffic stop. He added, while it's frustrating from the law enforcement perspective, officers showed great professionalism in that moment. There comes a point in time while erring on the side of caution, it is typically a good stance to have, and what we've seen nationally from sovereign citizens is, it is that they can be violent. So sometimes too much pace, patience just allows someone more opportunity to become violent. Other law enforcement agencies in the nation have advised their fellow officers to immediately call for backup when faced with a sovereign. The reason is some sovereigns will become violent during an encounter. It's not that they become violent, it's more of being disobedient. It's almost frustrating to the point where they don't recognize law enforcement as an authority or the government in general, said King. They have undeniable rights that government can infringe upon, and they're their own being that's free to do what they choose. Chenault said each and every person must abide by the laws and the claim of being a sovereign citizen doesn't make anyone immune to the law. They're not wanting to recognize that they have to live by the law because they've announced themselves. Said Chenault, if we come into contact with someone that claims that, we're going to treat them just like everyone else and we'll be as nice to them as they can depending on how they treat us. That is the end of the article. Um, number one, the, the, the police chief uh, was correct there when he said there's a difference between the types of detention. You're not always free to go, but it's not. So if an officer pulls you over, you are being detained, but it's not a custodial detention. So they don't actually have you in custody. That's important for search and seizure purposes. Um, but when a cop pulls you over, okay, you can't just leave whenever you want. If you do, you can face additional charges. And the same thing is, is so, so you are in a form of detention whenever an officer pulls you over. In fact, as soon as the lights go on, you're, you are almost in a form of detention. So I believe that's important to know. Uh, obviously, these sovereign citizens don't recognize it. I thought, you know, this guy, we get this sovereign citizen, um, reading the talking points from the cell phone. That goes back to some of the earlier points that I mentioned that I believe the movement is growing because of the dissemination of information on the internet. I know most of you agree with me, but you know, these, what are these idiots, what are these idiots doing? They're downloading, uh, you know, these sovereign citizen texts and, and saving them on their phone so they can spit them out like they're magic words when a cop pulls them over, like, dude, I, you know, look up what a defense attorney has to say. There are magic words out there. You're just not nailing them, okay? They're just not nailing them right. Uh, but I think it says volumes that the, the officer, that this police department does an annual training on sovereign citizens. They're that big of a problem that the police have to be specially trained on how to deal with them. Now this, you know, in this article, they didn't say that it was a huge problem in the area, but there's certainly, it, I think it's a growing force. We saw this article published 18 hours ago and uh, this officer detailing um, him uh, having to smash out the window of sovereign citizen Roe. So, you know, 
Part of what I want to do on this show is drop the latest news on Sovereign Citizens. This is the latest news. So I'm coming to you with this article. I'll put the link in the description below. If you like my content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. It's a free way to support the show, to support me, to support the content. Also, sign up for my email list. Get a free PDF on the history of sovereign citizenship and join me for more shows in the future.